Hi there, my name is Jonathan McIntosh and in this video I want to talk to you about how to use PowerPoint effectively and how to avoid the pitfalls of bad slides in your presentation. I'm going to cover a series of various tips um, referring to the points on this screen here and I'm going to go through um, these points in this order. It's very important that either the first or usually the second slide of your presentation uh, informs the audience about the outline of your presentation. So, for example, on the previous slide, I outlined the points that were going to be covered in this video presentation. So you should use the second slide, for example, of your presentation to outline the key aims that are going to help you address the overall research question um, that you are going to address or answer in your presentation. Then as you go through the presentation, follow the order of the points in which they were discussed on the outline slide. This is really important because it helps to structure the presentation and provides signposting to the audience as they watch your presentation. Only place the main points on the outline slide. Don't try and crowd it with lots of different points of everything that you're going to discuss. These are not necessary because you can discuss these ex pieces of extra information as you go through the presentation. Good slide structure um, is very clear and it's easy for the audience to read. So for example, use one to two slides per minute for your presentation write in point form, not in complete sentences. So try and get the gist of what you're saying in the bullet point. Include really no more than four to five points per slide and try to avoid being overly wordy. Use keywords or phrases in order to best capture the audience's attention so that they can hook into what you are saying rather than spend time reading information from the screen. This is an example of bad slide structure. You look at this from the audience point of view and you just go, oh, I have to read this now. So unless it's a long quote that you want the audience to read or that you're going to read out, but you should paraphrase such a long quote in a way, um, try and avoid slides that look like this. Also, it's best in a short presentation to avoid a distracting animation or if you need to use animation, don't go overboard with the different effects. And if you're going to use animation at all, be consistent with how you animate particular points if you use uh, animation at all. It can really annoy the audience and again, it will take away from the points that you're trying to communicate in the presentation. Animation can be effective, but just be wary, particularly in short presentations, of using it. Fonts also play a, a very important role in how the audience is engaged with your PowerPoint presentation. So the font has to be big enough to be seen from the back of a large room, for example, if it's a lecture theatre, but it's still got to be read by people sitting at the back of a seminar room. So use at least 18 point font. When I devise PowerPoint presentations, I tend to use 32 um, point as the size for headings on slides. I use 24 for the main points and then I use 20 for indented points. Um, and use a standard font. So this font is Arial. Um, Times New Roman can be easily read, but sometimes it's a bit boring. Um, but don't go all out and use a kind of really groovy font. Um, it can be quite hard for the audience to read the points. Um, a rounder font is usually better for PowerPoint. Here are some examples of very bad fonts. So the first example is too small. Capital if you capitalise letters or sentences, it just seems like you're screaming at your audience. Don't do that. And complicated fonts, 
just annoy um, audience members. So again, try and stick something with something that is non-offensive, but is maybe kind of more rounded, like aerial. Um, and this will serve to help your audience follow the points on the screen. Colour can also be very good for presentations. I tend to prefer using a light background with a dark font. And but this means that you can obviously adopt a different colour if you want to. The use of colour can be used to reinforce the logic or the structure of your presentation. And indeed, um, many PowerPoint programmes um, utilise sets of different colours um, for particular slide settings. Colour can be used to emphasise a point, um, but I would say or reinforce that you should only use colour occasionally or different colours occasionally and to, re to reinforce or emphasise um, points as you go through. Colour can also be very distracting. It can, it can get lost, such as the yellow and the white background. Using different colours is also a way to annoy your reader and your audience members. Using different colours for different fonts can be confusing because what do these different colours mean? and don't be tempted to use a rainbow font. Um, it's very creative, but it can also be very bad. Oh, sorry. So the use of backgrounds um, also makes your font stand out on the colours that you use for your font. Simple backgrounds tend to be the best. Throughout this presentation, I've just used a white background with black text. Um, I prefer to use backgrounds that are light, but some people prefer to use a dark background and then a light text. So maybe a dark blue background and then white or a very light blue um, font. Try to be consistent with your background um, throughout the presentation, particularly if it's a short presentation. Um, it helps to create a better sense of continuity and bring the presentation together more. This is an example of a bad background. So we have lots of different colours on blocks of colour on a white background. The text is black and it's actually quite hard to read. So imagine if you were sitting at the back of a lecture theatre, you just go, what on earth is this? And yes, yeah, so just don't do anything like this. <laughs> and then avoid sounds, for etc. Um, for different forms of animation. Um, again, it draws attention away from the, the very good points that you have to say and the argument that you're making. Proofread your slides for spelling errors or the use of repeated words. As you can see there, the use of, of repeated words. Um, that is intentional. Uh, and also look for grammat grammatical errors that you might have made. They take away from the polish of a presentation and in some ways really cruel audience members and then remember your PowerPoint presentation for spelling error or grammar error rather than the fantastic points that you're making. If English is not your first language, please have someone else check your presentation, particularly for definite and indefinite articles such as A and the. Um, you can gain assistance from this via the library and the writing centre at your university. You can also ask someone who's a native English speaker to perhaps have a look over your presentation for you to give you some advice. So, in conclusion, use an effective and a strong closing to your PowerPoint. Your audience is likely to remember the words, the last words that you say, and use a conclusion slide to summarise the main points of your presentation. Usually these points refer back to the aims of the presentation that are on the outline slide, which is usually the second slide um, of the presentation. It's also nice sometimes to end your presentation not just with the conclusion slide or a list of references cited, although this is important, but to invite questions from your audience. Um, and this can just be a simple slide with the word questions on it. Um, in this way, you invite your audience to formulate and ask questions. And it's a nicer way to round off your presentation. 